Well, hello, everybody. Let's talk about the reaction coordinate diagram and what that tells us about activation, energy, and temperature. It helps us understand the reaction mechanism as it's related to the reactions we're studying in their kinetics. So first of all, the reaction coordinate diagram has energy on the y-axis and reaction progress over time on the x-axis. So that reaction progress is essentially unitless. Um, it's just a, as the reaction proceeds, okay? Um, in this particular picture, we have these two hills. Um, you could have one hill. Each hump on your hill indicates an actual step within the reaction pathway. So you can have a multiple step reaction, a single step reaction, et cetera. On the left side are always your reactants, on the right side are always your products. And so your reactants can be lower or higher energy than your products. Um, so it really depends on the reaction. Um, so the rate of reaction does depend on the pathway um, so we can predict whether or not reaction is going to be faster or slower just by looking at the height of the activation barrier. So how do you measure that? Well, if you know the reactant line and you know the top of the hill, the activation energy, Ea, is going to be the amount of energy to get to that transition state. Okay, so in our collision theory, that was the minimal energy we needed to get over that activation barrier, okay? Um, overall, the enthalpy of the reaction, which is the uh, thermodynamic parameter, is the difference between the reactants and the products. So that is not necessarily related to the kinetics, um, but we'll look at some examples of how we can get that information, okay? So, as we mentioned before, the thermodynamic quantity delta E or the enthalpy of the reaction between reactants and products, that is a thermodynamic property that tells us whether or not the reaction is favored or disfavored. Exothermic reactions are favored where you're going downhill in energy. Endothermic are disfavored and will need energy input to happen, okay? So you can see that the exothermic reaction is going to have a lower activation energy than the equivalent um, endothermic reaction. So the activation energy is what affects the reaction connect kinetics. So they're you know, related in that sense. Um, so this is just one step uh, coordinate reaction coordinate diagram. Um, so what can uh, we look at in terms of the same reaction? So if we're looking at the same type of reaction, a one-step reaction, if the activation energy is lower, the reaction is going to occur at a faster rate. And the reason is that the collisions that occur are going to happen more successfully more often because you need less energy for that to happen. Okay, so at the same temperature, um, this reaction on the top is going to be slower than the reaction on the bottom. Well, what about the same exact activation energy? So raising the temperature will not change the activation energy. The activation energy will be changed only if you have a difference in the height of this barrier. Now that can be affected by the presence of a catalyst, which we'll talk about more later. You can't change the height of the barrier based upon the temperature of the reaction mixture. However, a higher temperature reaction mixture is going to give you more successful collisions uh, to reach this higher activation energy needed. So EA remains unchanged with increased temperatures. All right, so um, example problems would be where you would have to interpret these diagrams. The places here, we have the reactants, we have the products, we have the enthalpy, we have the activation energy, and we have the location of the activated complex, which is on the top of the hill. Later on, we'll talk about the formation of um, the intermediates, which would be one type of reaction where you have multiple steps. 